Hello everybody, Bill Owen from MNPC Tech along with the Mosquito from Mosquito Mods on YouTube. And we're looking at the new Ragentech Styx Micro ATX case. This currently retails on Amazon.com and Newegg.com for $89 or $84 with free shipping. I, I like that it's brushed and not painted because to me it's like, well, if you're going to go for the expense of having aluminum, you might as well have brushed aluminum, not painted aluminum. So. And then also, I like the uh, little silver bezel around the little chamfer here that's not anodized. Mm -hmm. That uh, machined look. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of, what was it, the Rebel A, I think you did that on? You took some of your billet uh, fan grills and you painted them black and then you sanded the corners off just to expose, expose the, the aluminum again to kind of get that look to it. And that's kind of what that accomplishes. It's like, well... I like it. Mm -hmm. It's it's something that's it sets the front apart from the rest of the case, but it's not like screaming in your face. <laughs> yeah, it's very stylistic. Um, it's classy. This is also it reminds me a lot of Leon Lee. It's a timeless looking design. Ten years from now, it still looks good. Yeah, I think I would probably agree with that. So here on the front, we've got a knot sticker. This is actually a screen printed thing on the front of it, so if you like it, it's probably going to be more durable than a sticker, but if you don't, it's going to be more of a pain in the butt to get rid of. And now that we've got the system plugged in, we can see that this illuminates white when you have the power on, and then I don't know how easy we'll be able to see it. Oh, there you go, you get a couple little flashes of the red from the, from the hard drive activity light. On the top, you've got a pair of USB 3.0 ports and your microphone and headphone jacks, kind of right top front center. This top mesh is removable. You just have to do it from the inside of the case. You have to take off the side panel to get to it because you don't, you don't have the ability to just pop it off from the outside. And if we take a look on the side here, we have there's four countersunk screws through the side panel that holds it in place. So you just take out those and you can get into the case. Over here you have a slot. And what's that slot for? Your laptop drive? Yes, it's for an optical drive. <laughs> so even in a case this size, you could still have your optical drive. Although this one isn't a slot load, we know that it's not gonna <laughs> work with the side panel, but. Just, this is just to show you that there's two brackets on the front of the case and that just slides right in. And then you can have your slim optical drive up front. And then down here on the rear bottom of the side panel, you have a pretty small window. Your graphics cards are all gonna be up here unless you mod it to put it vertically somewhere else. But it's kind of there just to show off your motherboard. So I guess you might wanna invest in a nice looking CPU cooler but it is just a flat piece of acrylic with a beveled corner I mean with a beveled edge and then rounded corner so I think it would be really easy if you wanted to replace it with a tinted piece or what I would probably do is switch it around and I'd probably put the window on the inside rather than having it stick out the outside I just think it looks a little bit cleaner but it would be really easy to replace if you wanted to there's just four screws and I'm guessing there's uh, a matching nut for that screw on the inside. And taking a look at the back here, you can see how things ended up so compact. You don't actually have a power supply back here anywhere. You just have a power extension that ends up going up to the front of the case and we'll get into that later. But you also get two grommets for the water cooling that I don't think I've seen in the last eight years. Um, yeah, we'll keep that on the inside. And then you do get five slots. So if for some reason you were gonna run an SLI system in a micro ATX board that needed you to have a space in between them, you can do that. So you can have up to five, or if you wanted to put like a fan controller or some other device that wouldn't actually need a slot in your motherboard, but just needs a place to mount, you have room for that. There is a cover for your PCI slots. I like that it's, just completely removable and it's not one of those stupid little thumb screw slide clamp things so there then you hit access to all of your screws to keep your graphics cards whatever else you might put in there and then 
Down here at the bottom, we have room for a single 120 millimeter fan. There's no slots. It's not stamped out for 140s or 80s, anything like that. So you are going to have to use a 120 unless you just decide not to use anything there. Checking out the bottom, this, this is why you had that plug on the back of the case. There was an extension that plugs into your power supply and that mounts in the front and then points straight down. So it's a way to, to make the case not quite as tall, but still be able to support a full ATX power supply. And then they also kind of have these neat feet. They're screwed in and they are rubber. And I haven't seen anything like them yet. At least nothing that I remember. Like usually you just get a round or like some big plastic thing that has a couple of little rubber cubes in it. But I don't know, they're kind of nice. They're, they're relatively soft, so they should work pretty well to not scratch up your desk or not emit any vibrations into it. And then you also have room for another 120 millimeter fan. Again, there's no slots and it's also, I believe, only drilled out for a 120. So don't get any options except for yes or no there. And then we also have six grommeted holes for what looks like a three and a half inch drive. And you should be able to you know, pick which set of four you wanna use to mount your drive in. So you can move it up or down if you need to. So here's the Raging Tech sticks without its two side panels on and it looks clean Moss. It really does. It does and for all the faults that a solid single piece panel that just kind of slaps on the side introduces. So things like you know if you're not careful with your cables you might have a bow in it or something. It definitely keeps things nice and clean. You know, you don't have all those weird slots and things that the panel has to snap into or glide into or whatever. So what I was thinking, that wouldn't be that hard to make an acrylic side panel, an all acrylic side panel for the whole thing because, I mean, the side panels are just a sheet of aluminum that screws onto the side. So you could probably pretty easily just get a piece cut that size and then you just have to drill and countersink four holes. This comes in what five different colors as well? Five or six. We got this one black, silver, red, green, blue, gold? gold. Pretty sure there's a yep. gold. And back here you have two separate trays that are held onto the back that you can mount your two and a half inch drives whether you want to have mechanical hard drives or just the you know kind of more standard two and a half inch SSDs. You get two spots for those on the back and that's about all you get on the back apart from cable ties. There's just those two. They must have heard Bill complaining about cable grommets because look at the or, uh, standoffs, the punch outs. Yeah, Just giant. look at that cable tie. That thing is huge. That's, yeah. It's gotta keep. I kind of would have preferred to have this plug for the extension up to the power supply in the bottom. I think if we could have just moved this up, you know, and had it on the bottom, it would have given you more room to run cables over the top of, or bottom of the motherboard, I guess. Cause this, I mean, the hole is fairly good size, uh, fairly good size, but then with the motherboard there, you, you know, you got to squeeze everything all the way underneath it. So how useful is that really? You know, it could have been half the height, but, so I, I mean, I, I understand that if you do that, if you move this plug down here and move all the hardware up, you lose space for your radiator, but it might be worth it because I, to me, this size of a case is probably only gonna have a single graphics card in it anyway. So for me, I would have rather had the space on the bottom, you know, than rather than having it all up top. Also included with the case is this bracket that goes in the side, but it allows you to have up to two three and a half inch drives or up also two two and a half inch drives. And you're probably gonna wanna make those so that the power and data connections are on the inside because you don't have any room on the outside. But in seeing this on there, I know we don't have it actually mounted, but you have the screws lined up with the holes or with the grommets that are there. Uh, I'm not sure, but I might prefer to have this hole extended just a little bit because if you have those right angle connectors, 
you might not be able to use that right here. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't reach. So the hole just isn't quite close enough to the edge of the SSD or the SSD isn't quite close enough to it. So in order to get there, you'd really have to bend your cables. So if I were gonna do that, you're either gonna have to stick to these, which also means you're not gonna be able to get your 90 degree data connections either, or you're gonna have to fix that problem. And this is the side that you would need to have it on too. So make sure when you mount your SSD that you mount it so that these flanges are the opposite direction from your SSD since it has to go in that way. Because if you try and put it that way, you're not gonna be able to get your uh, side panel on. No. <laughs> so here we have the system taken out of it and we can kind of see down here, this is your power extension that goes to the power supply that comes from the front of the case. This bracket is removable. There's four screws underneath that hold it in place. So if you wanted to, you could take that out to mount your power supply and then mount it that way. I don't know if that would be any easier or not, but it might be nice to get that plugged in before you get the whole thing situated. So we were trying to find the specs on the included 120 millimeter fan in the Raging Tech sticks, and we're gonna pull it out. They do list a Boreas Beta fan in 120 millimeters that is a four pin versus this is a three pin, and the specs on the Boreas Beta is 65 CFM at 24 decibels. So that's presuming they both share the same, you know, hardware inside. We don't know. So on the top, there's just these two little clips that you push out. That's how you get your top panel filter out. It is one of those, one of those filters. Yeah. Where, <laughs> eh, I don't like that design at all. You get the metal mesh and then you have a honeycomb on the inside. And in order to get to the actual plastic mesh, you get to bend all those out and take it apart. So you probably won't, <laughs> but I guess at least it is there. It is a filter. So that's, that's at least one thing that's, that's nice about it. But other than that, it's kind of obnoxious that you have to try and get to it. I also didn't put this in the first time, so I don't know. The standoffs were pre-installed already, which was a nice gesture by Ragin Tech. And then we can take a close look at the PCB board for the top I.O. right there. And it's screwed in place, which is nice. And if you decide you don't want those, you can always use them in a scratch build later. Yeah. I'm not the only one that does that, am I? No. <laughs> I really liked your suggestion of replacing the window with your own smoked acrylic window or moving it to the inside the side panel versus having it mounted on the exterior from the factory or making your own clear side panel for both sides or one side if you want it smoked because it's so easy with these simple plate style side panels to do something like that. Yeah and even if you didn't want to go with a full side panel you know a clear acrylic side panel you could easily just cut a bigger hole too i mean it's just a flat sheet so it's really easy i mean i've cut windows and things before where you're like trying to get stuff around the interior panel where you got stuff that slides in and has to latch and keep things in place and if this is going to be your first window mod this would be a really one easy one to start with yeah, and it would look good too. Um, another observation regarding the slot load cutout right here. Um, I would have liked to have seen some more protection along this edge just so you don't scratch a disc while you're putting it in there. Other than that, I don't really, I gotta be honest, I don't really have any complaints about it. And this is about as compact as you're gonna get allowing a, an ATX power supply and a full size video card. Or two. <laughs> I mean, this one, you, yeah. could, you could fit two graphics cards in it pretty easily if you went with a micro ATX board. But And there's also a pretty good amount of space if you wanted to go with a custom water-cooled loop. 
you can fit a radiator up top and you could fit a pretty thick radiator and fan combination if you went ITX and especially especially if you went ITX but also if you went micro ATX you would have a decent amount of room as long as you just stick with one graphics card so I don't know I think it'd be kind of fun I don't I don't think you'd go too crazy I, I don't think you would be trying to fit you know a 240 in the top a 240 in the front and the 120 <laughs> on the back because I mean you got to remember your power supply even if you get a really small ATX power supply is going to be taking up this mm -hmm. much of it so you really don't have much room there but yeah, you know, it'd be fun to see somebody prove me wrong, that's for sure. <laughs> and I bet you there's somebody out there. And if you do, or you've done a Raging Tech build with the sticks, please let us know in the comments and post a link so we can check it out. Now, Moss, since you're going to take ownership of this case, what would you do with this for a build? An ITX build with water cooling if I was going to do a vertical GPU mod. Because I think if you did a vertical GPU in the front up here, so if you put your graphics card here, that would give you a little bit of space back here to put a small reservoir. And I think that's probably what I would do if I was gonna do a water-cooled build. And then also I would probably for sure at least move this window inside the case rather than on the outside. But I would probably consider just making the whole, I'd probably go with smoked acrylic, but I'd probably make make that whole side panel be a window because it's so easy. Why not? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a gimme mod for sure. Um, so, thank you everybody for watching this review. If you have any comments or questions about the Rage and Tech sticks, maybe you're going to take on a build and have any questions. Moss is going to take ownership of the case. So if we need to refer back to anything, I can text Moss and ask him <laughs> to take a look for you. Um, but be sure to check out his YouTube channel as well. It's Mosquito Mods on YouTube. And he's always got some type of interesting project going on. And he's got the most epic workshop in progress right now. It's getting close. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. Check out Mosquito Mods channel on YouTube. Show support for fellow builders and modders out there. And if you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe. We've got some interesting project updates and other reviews coming down the pipeline.